Hi everyone, this is your horoscope for Monday the 7th of May going through until Sunday the 13th of May. It's really nice to be with you. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to give you a day-by-day -day rundown of what's happening this week in terms of the astrology. Um, and these horoscopes are based on UK time and they're designed for all signs of the zodiac. So this is like an astrological weather report. I look at what's going on in the heavens and what relationships the stars form with each other. And I look at what that creates and how it's going to reflect here on planet Earth for all of us. So uh, these are the energies. Different people are going to react differently to them. Uh, but I'm going to give you this day-by-day -day breakdown. Now, this week is a little bit all over the place. There's lots of tricky energy and there's lots of changes in terms of the energy. So immediately you kind of have to get ready to uh, go with the flow a little bit and to stay with it and to keep on your toes. It's going to be a busy week. That we know for certain. On Monday, the 7th of May, Mercury is in Aries. So Mercury is the communication planet in, in Aries. It's very outspoken. And that squares, so it forms a, a, a relationship full of friction with Pluto in Capricorn. Now Pluto is one of the outer planets and it's the planet of transformation and change. Now with Mercury in Aries and this Pluto square, there's real friction when it comes to uh, what you're saying, how you're thinking and... Um, what you're willing to do to get there. Venus is in Gemini, so the planet of love and beauty, very outspoken as well. That square is Neptune in Pisces, so there's a question of love and communication and um, matching that up with what reality actually looks like. Um, do I have love in my life? Am I connecting with other people or is that something that I still need to manifest in my life if I want it? The moon is in Aquarius, which is very humanitarian, and that trines the love planet Venus in Gemini. So a lot of energy towards other people, that's quite positive. But those two then square, they form friction again with the sun in Taurus and Jupiter in Scorpio. So you can see that it's complicated and that it's a recipe for uh, really a lot of um, thoughts in lots of different directions. So on the one hand, you're going to want to be of service to people. Um, but on the other hand, you're going to want to get your way, get what's yours and get your message across. So it puts you in between a rock and a hard place because how can I help people if I'm trying to beat them, if I'm competing with them? So on Monday the 7th, there may be some secretive or underhanded behavior that's designed to sabotage. And that can come from other people or it can come from you. So if you find yourself being dishonest and sabotaging people, then you've been hooked into this complicated energy that has made you incredibly self-interested and that has um, made the unacceptable acceptable in terms of getting where you want to go. So the end justifies the means in some way. So on Monday, you can do really well instead is if you focus on uh, using your ideas and um, being practical and manifesting what it is you want for yourself rather than comparing yourself to other people because that's going to make you unhappy on Monday the 7th. Comparing yourself with people makes you unhappy every day because you're comparing your insides with other people's outside. So, you know, for instance, I've got hay fever and I feel terrible today and I'm sitting somewhere and I look at a beautiful couple walking by with a dog Then I think, look, they've got the perfect life and poor me, I'm sitting here with hay fever. I don't know what happens in their relationship. I don't know what's really going on. I'm comparing how I feel and sniffling and everything with how other people look. It's not a valid comparison. So of course that's going to make me unhappy. Tuesday the 8th of May, we have the Taurus Sun opposing Jupiter in Scorpio. This happens once a year and you'll actually be able to see Jupiter quite brightly in the night sky because it's literally 180 degrees away from the Sun and it's totally illuminated. 
So you'll see it better than any other day of the year. Uh, the Sun in Taurus is about being practical and grounded and earthy. Jupiter in Scorpio is good luck by listening to your feelings. So again, we've got um, this opposition and a feeling of being pushed and pulled. Taurus and Scorpio are on the same axis. They oppose each other in astrology. So Taurus is about physical control, money, belongings, the way things look. Scorpio is about emotional control. Working with others, getting people to do what you want, being intuitive. So on the one hand, you're going to want to control your physical financial circumstances. On the other hand, you'll want to experience good luck by listening to your feelings and letting yourself be guided. The Aquarius moon, so making you feel very humanitarian, that squares Jupiter in Scorpio. Again, good luck by listening to your feelings. And it sextiles Mercury in Aries and Uranus in Aries. So we've got the same difficult conflict here on Tuesday. Tuesday is a difficult day to make decisions um, because you're totally conflicted internally. Do you um, listen to your feelings and help other people? Or do you listen to your other feelings, which are all about make money and be practical and focus on your own thing and don't be overly trusting and make sure that you get your thing across. And on Tuesday, you'll feel quite competitive. So it's much easier to just let yourself kind of react to situations that arise during the day anyway, because you feel totally overwhelmed and internally conflicted on Tuesday uh, when it comes to making decisions. I think the easiest and best way to kind of work with this is to realize that um, you can do both. I mean, you can really try and excel in your work and you can do something for yourself emotionally and spiritually in the evening or the other or vice versa if you work night shifts you know and really just um using the because the thing that's going to upset you is if you have really grand dreams at the moment and really these huge desires of what the future could look like and this is what i could manifest and then you have to do all of these things which you're forced to do through work or other people telling you and you really start to resent that so to remove the resentment do something for yourself, carve out some time for yourself today so that you can listen to your feelings and that you can feel like, yes, you are giving yourself the time and space to be heard and for your own hopes and dreams to be realized. And you're also meeting your obligations and your duties. So, you know, on Tuesday, just try and keep things as balanced as possible. Some days, you know, it's good enough to say, I did the best I could today. It wasn't ideal, but I did the best I can and I couldn't have done any more. On Wednesday, the 9th of May, we've got the moon going into Pisces at 12 minutes past three in the morning. So the moon in Pisces now makes you very sensitive and intuitive and creative. Venus, the love planet is still in Gemini, so very flirty and fun. That quincuxes, so it forms a harmonious relationship with the lucky planet Jupiter in Scorpio. And the moon in Pisces sextiles, so it creates harmony with Saturn, the planet of structure, which is also in the sign of Capricorn, so working towards structure. So Wednesday is totally different than Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, you have the ability to manifest one of your hopes and dreams into reality, especially if that hope and dream involves or is related to personal and romantic relationships. Make sure you take advantage of this energy here today on Wednesday the 9th and plan something with friends, um, be out and about, uh, attend some sort of social function or event. It's gonna be a really great time to just chat and to uh, get close to people, get to know to people and to create something that's solid and that lasts a long time. So best day of the week so far for love and romance and relationship. Thursday, the 10th of May, we've got the moon still in Pisces. So still nurturing 
um, the opposite of Monday and Tuesday, which was very kind of oof, like intense. Wednesday and Thursday are, are much more selfless and being in your feelings and relaxed. So Thursday the 10th, we've got the Pisces moon conjuncting Neptune. Neptune is the water planet that rules Pisces. So that's very dreamlike now and very fuzzy and very um, fantastical and emotional and intuitive. They trine Jupiter in Scorpio. So good luck again by listening to your feelings. So we've got triple water now, moon in water, Neptune in water and Jupiter in a water sign. And they all square Venus and Gemini then. So feelings and love and communication. So Thursday is going to feel really surreal. It's going to be one of those days where you have deja vu and you meet people who you feel you've met before. And any social function that you attend is going to magically turn into a really memorable occasion because there is magic and love in the air. And if you do anything, it'll be one of those life events that you'll remember forever. So going to a concert or um, sitting on a hilltop and watching the sunset together or um, being at an amazing um, art gallery opening and having hilarious conversations with people you meet. Any of those things is it's so important on Wednesday and um, Thursday to be out and about to grasp the glitter bomb that has gone off in the universe now on these two days and that really turns your life into magic and where you can manifest all of the wonderful dreamy fantastic things that you want. On Friday the 11th of May the moon goes into Aries at 12:41 in the afternoon the Aries moon conjuncts Chiron in Aries. So the moon in Aries is immediately, again, brings you back into the self. So we're going away from uh, Wednesday and Thursday and heading more into Monday, Tuesday territory again now on Friday, because Aries is about how can I overcome obstacles to get to my goal. That conjuncts Chiron in Aries, the wounded healer. So memories of past times when you haven't succeeded to overcome obstacles and achieve your plans. Those two trine Pluto and Capricorn, the planet of transformation in the earthly sign of Capricorn. The moon squares Saturn in Capricorn, structure, solidity, permanence. Venus in Gemini also quincuxes Pluto in Capricorn. So we've got a day where you're uh, looking at the past and reevaluating past failures that might upset you and that might also push you into taking action to try again. We've got uh, the possibility of transforming our day to day routine and lives by meeting another person, having a connection with that person and really creating a new structure in life. So Thursday and Friday, both very romantic days. But on Friday, you, you, there's an added element. If you have a bone to pick with someone, you'll take great joy in doing that. So again, it's a justified anger that you will kind of relish in a little bit. Try and avoid that if possible. If you've ever experienced someone telling you, I told you so, you're going to know what that feels like. You don't usually have wonderful feelings towards the person who says, you see, I told you that wasn't going to work and you didn't listen to me. Usually when someone says that, your heart doesn't open with love and compassion for that other human being. It's more like, I wish I could deck you, you know? So um, Friday is a complicated day emotionally. Um, so focus on the positive things like... Uh, being funny and interesting and kind and loving and caring instead of being vindictive and schaden for and um you know like being awkward and what enjoying seeing someone else squirm you know that kind of energy don't do that it'll come around to bite you there's something called karma and if you take pleasure in doing that kind of thing then um that is within the scope of what some people do, 
but if you go you know if you sink that low then life is going to sink with you and it'll come back to you and you'll get that but via other people so don't do it saturday the 12th of may we have the aries moon squaring saturn and capricorn so you feel like you want to move forward saturn and capricorn is saying you go and work okay so there's friction between them i want to go and play you can't play you have to work mars is in capricorn the male principle is saying go and work and pluto is in capricorn transformation it and change pluto says you can change your life if you go and work so aries the aries moon squares all three of those it squares saturn mars and pluto so there's friction between this huge amount of responsibility that's just pressing you down and this tiny little moon which says eep eep i want to break free you know so that's really what you're going to experience on saturday you're going to feel like the whole world of burden on your shoulder and you're going to say enough i need to break free i need to be my own person enough with all the pressure and the schedules and the things i have to do i understand i have bills to pay but i just don't want to deal with all of that today so if you can use saturday to break free and to run away for the day and to do something that you really care about on sunday the 13th of may we have the moon going into taurus at 16 minutes past six in the evening the moon going into Taurus makes you much more grounded and much calmer, much more connected to your own body, more interested in beautiful things and sensuality and um, being interested in the real world and doing something to make things look pretty, uh, like gardening or painting, things like that. Mercury, the communication planet, also enters Taurus. So Mercury is slower than usual when it's in Taurus because Taurus is an earth sign and Mercury is the communication planet. It's Hermes with his winged helmet and winged shoes. In Taurus, it's much more about communicating in practical ways, symbolically, telling someone you love them through food, um, telling someone you love them by giving them a present, that kind of stuff. I don't know about everyone watching this, but I'm a Virgo. And if someone tries to express their love to me by cooking for me, that irritates me because I'll have to do all the dishes afterwards. And as a Virgo, that's the thing I'm concerned with. Not the meal, <laughs> the dishes that I'm going to have to take care of afterwards. So if you do want to express your love to someone, just make sure you also do the dishes if you're serving up a Virgo, okay? Because if they're as awkward as me, even though you've made a nice gesture, it won't go down well because <laughs> yeah, Virgos are picky. Okay, so um, it's Mother's Day in the US and in Europe, not in the UK. The UK people do it on a different day. I think it's already come and gone. I think it was in March, but uh, in Europe and the US, it's Mother's Day on the 13th. So because the moon is in Taurus, you're going to feel a lot more grounded and communication becomes more visual, concrete and symbolic. And... Um, when the communication planet Mercury is in Taurus like this, visual learners will rejoice because people will think more visually and symbolically. So teachers are going to use more visual aids, practical things. Um, you'll express yourself more by illustrating things clearly, uh, showing people having tangible things to hand if you're trying to get a point across because Mercury in Taurus likes ritual and it likes using practical items and things. So if you're someone who has an idea to express, writing, painting, pottery making, jewelry design, floristry, anything like that, from Sunday the 13th onwards, it's a really great day to be creative and to get into crafts and to do things like that. So that's what I get for you for this week, Monday the 7th of May to the 13th of May. Sunday the 13th of May. I hope you have a wonderful week. If you would like a private reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Just click on the readings tab to order your reading. 
In my private readings, I use astrology, tarot, and numerology, and I combine them all. To draw up your astrology chart, I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, I can either use sunrise or rectify the chart for you. I need 10 life events, and I can work out the time of birth. And once I have your chart in front of me, I can see it's a blueprint of your soul. I can see where you've been in past lifetimes, why you've come into this lifetime, what your life purpose is, what your vocational aptitudes are, what's coming up for you in love and romance and finance and health, family matters, travel, um, and also what's destined for you in each one of those areas. So if you're interested in a reading with me, then please do get in touch via the website. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I will speak to you next week.